In this video, we're gonna be rooting the Google Nexus 5s made by LG. Both of these are the 32 gigabyte unlocked models from the Google Play Store. Well, let's get started. All right, so the very first thing you wanna do is Google CF auto root, just like that, and then click the first link that Google brings up. And then you'll just scroll all the way down here until you see this little section right here. And you'll see LG Nexus 5 hammerhead. And you'll just click on where it says file. And then you'll go down here and you'll click download. And it'll download this little folder. And then you just wait for it to finish. All right, and then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click on show in folder. And then it's going to be a little zip file right here on your desktop. That little guy right there, weighing it at about 10 megabytes. We're just going to simply right click on it. And we're gonna click extract to see if auto root hammerhead Nexus 5. And it's gonna create a little folder right there. All right, so in that folder, you can take this and move it to your desktop if you want, or you can just leave it right there. In that folder, you're gonna find this little thing right here that says root windows. You also have Mac and Linux. This is by far the easiest way to root your LG Google Nexus 5. All right, now we're just gonna take our USB port and plug it into our computer here. I'm using this laptop because my other laptop has only USB 3.0 ports, and a lot of things don't like using USB 3.0 ports. We're going to hook our phone up to our computer. What I recommend doing is going, dragging this down and then going to your settings here, and then going down to the bottom, going to about phone, and then go down here to where it says build number and keep tapping on that. You are now a developer. Go back and then you'll see developer options. And then you can go down here to USB debugging, check that. And then we should be good to go there. All right. So now let's plug our phone in and see if our computer finds the drivers. Okay, so it's saying we have a Nexus 5 and Google Now just got triggered, so let's just ignore that. All right, so what we can do is in our platform tools, um, if you have that the Android SDK installed, you can shift, right click, open command window here, and type ADB devices, enter. And then hopefully our Phone, yep, there's our phone, which it's saying unauthorized. So we'll need to go to our phone here and we'll need to press on where it says allow this computer always and then press okay. And now when you type ADB devices, it should work just fine. All right, so in here we're gonna type ADB reboot boot loader and then press enter. And now our phone's rebooting into bootloader mode, which is right here. If you don't know how to get to this manually, just hold the power button, the volume up and down at the same exact time while the device is off, and then you'll boot into this screen. That's what my bootloader says right now. It says that it's locked and that secure boot is enabled. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and just close out this right here. And then we're gonna close out this uh, ADB platform tools. We're going to minimize our web browser and we're going to go back to the downloads folder and we're going to go to that CF auto root zip right here and then we're just going to click run window. If you're not, if you have UAC enabled on your computer, then you'll need to right click on this and then you'll need to choose run as administrator and then I'll put my phone up right here. Oh, I have a touch screen so I can't do that. Hold on. All right, so I pressed enter instead of the other keys. Um, and then it brought up this little screen right here. I'm just gonna go up and then highlight unlock bootloader. And then I'm just simply gonna press the power button to choose yes. And now it, my bootloader is unlocked and it is erasing your phone. That is very important. The reason I didn't install any apps or do anything is because I knew that I was going to lose all that when I unlocked my bootloader. So unlocking your bootloader does wipe everything. If you plan on doing this, hopefully you backed everything up before doing it. And it says right here that it's uh, press any key to continue, download any boot.image, booting okay, and then there's our little red Android screen. 
and we should be rooted here in just a moment. And this is the easiest method by far. All you need to worry about is drivers. If your computer is recognizing your phone, try a different USB port. Try a different cable. I've spent two hours with somebody on Skype wondering why custom recovery wasn't uh, flashing through fast boot. They tried a cable from their brother's phone and it worked just fine. So try a different USB port on your computer. Try a different USB cable. Uninstall drivers, reinstall them. Try a different computer. So, um, so, like this is Windows 8.1. Try a computer that has Windows 7. Just do your best to troubleshoot and you know, hopefully you'll fix your problem. This screen right here just indicates that it's erasing this phone completely and we're gonna have a, you know, we're gonna start from scratch, which is fine. Like I said, all I did was install one app, Instagram, and I signed to my Google account. That was it, because I knew I was gonna lose my progress. Once you unlock one time, just one time, from here on out, you'll be able to use Titanium Backup to back up your apps and then sync them to like Dropbox or Box.net or even Google Drive. So you can sync your backups to those services and if anything ever happens to your phone, you can just uh, sign back into your Dropbox, Box.net, or Google Drive account in, in Titanium Backup, and then it'll automatically start downloading everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this key, and now this, this is over, it's done. Just waiting on this to finish. All right, now this little symbol right here means that our bootloader is unlocked. And while this is going on, I do want to go ahead and do the other phone as well. This time, I won't even put it in uh, USB debugging. I will simply just power it off. And I will put this phone into download mode. Or, you know, this is the white one, in case you're curious. So, it's powered off. We're just going to hold these three buttons. Volume down, volume up, and power. Start. Okay. So, we're going to plug in the USB cable. We're gonna go over here to this tool again and we're just gonna double click on it and then press enter. And now it's asking me if I wanna unlock the bootloader in this one. I'm gonna go ahead and press yes. And now, now it's erasing the bootloader on here as well. And here, this one's asking us to sign into our Wi-Fi, activating our, our service and doing all the stuff that normal does upon first boot. All right, now it says downloading boot dot image booting. Whoa, crap! And now it's doing like the other one did before. All right, both phones are rooted right now. I will show you that here in just a second. All right, all I've done so far is simply signed into my Wi-Fi. I logged into both of my Gmail account and her Gmail account because this is my, the white one's my wife's Nexus 5 and the black one's my Nexus 5. So I signed into our Google accounts and it's all I've done. So after you run the tool and it, you sign into everything again, when you go to your app drawer, you should see a brand new app called Super SU. And wow, she has one more app than I do, so it must have downloaded an app on hers that mine doesn't have. Uh, Dice player, okay. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and remove this for purposes of, the vi of this video, which is it's a good app. I'm just, all right, so now we'll go to App Drawer. <laughs> we should see Super SU. So that's pretty freaking awesome. Chainfire is an amazing, amazing developer, so you can follow him on Google Plus or Twitter. It's completely up to you. I mean, you don't have to install custom. Most of the time, to uh, root an exit device, you ADB, fastboot, unlock, or you fastboot, uh, unlock, bootloader, and then you uh, fastboot flash recovery, and then you install SuperSU in your new Torp recovery, and you're good to go. You don't even have custom recovery. You could technically accept an OTA update, but it would break root. So we're gonna go here to settings, and I have purchased this app on my name and my wife's name, so it's it's already installing on hers. So the app costs $5, and you can just go to your settings and click upgrade to pro, and it'll be a $5 charge if you've never bought it before. The beauty of it is if you buy it one time, it's available on all your devices forever. 
You don't have to rebuy it. You can go to your, uh, I can go to my HTC One, my Galaxy S3, Galaxy S4, Galaxy Note 2, Galaxy Note 3, uh, Nexus 7, Nexus 7 2012. I can go to all my devices and Super SU Pro is available to download on all those devices after just paying for it one time. And six years from now, you'll still be able to install Super SU Pro. So it's not like you have to worry about losing it. One thing I found is that whenever you go to Super SU and then you go to settings, as you'll see, we are not pro. We actually have to reboot these devices in order to get the pro version to um, show up correctly. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so both devices have rebooted and then we're gonna go to our app drawer one more time. Well, not one more time, but we're gonna go to Super SU and then our settings. And now we have Super SU Pro. We can actually enable survival mode, which it makes it clear you need to disable it before doing an Android backup of your phone. And then I uncheck reauthentication just so that way every time an app updates, you don't have to re-grant it Super SU permission unless you want it to do that. If you do, it's up to you. This thing keeps just wanting to download the apps. All right, so and then from here, you can actually just choose full unroot and you'll be permanently unrooted and then you can just lock your bootloader and you're good to go. One, one way to test your um, Super SU is to go to here and download an app called it's an app called Root Checker, so you'll just press this little search button, and hopefully our Wi-Fi will cooperate um, upstairs and where the location I'm at, the Wi-Fi does not pick up very well at all. All right, so it's actually, uh, it's available for free, but just like Chainfire, I support Joey Krim. So um, right there's the free one at the very top. Why is the Root Checker Pro, there it is. Now, oh, she hasn't bought it on hers, okay. So on hers, we will have to use that free one. And then I gotta go a little bit closer to my router, hold on. All right, with some technical difficulties with Comcast, here we are. Let's open these apps up. And then, wow, the basic one's black and the pro one's, that's different. So agree, press okay. And then all we're gonna do here is we're gonna press verify root access. And there you go, we now have two rooted nexus fives and it says congratulations you have root access basically the pro one gives you more information about you know um the, how the root was obtained and and your busy box and all this other stuff in here too so there's definitely more things in here now we can go to the now we can go to the play store we can search for titanium backup well, obviously our Wi-Fi is not going to cooperate. So, there you have it. Okay, Google. That's the end of the video. Okay, Google. The video is now over. <laughs> oh, and it would all show Marquez Brown Lee. That's awesome. <laughs> I am one super, super happy camper. I have not rooted my Note 3 yet because of the stupid Knox crap um, on this phone. And I, I've been in love with this. The, the two things I'm gonna miss the most about my Nexus, or about my Note 3, is first of all, the screen size. Second of all, the freaking 1080p front camera. My video proving that Sprint works on the Nexus 5, the unlocked version from Google Play. I used the front facing camera on my Note 3. It's in crystal clear 1080p, it looks freaking great. On here, it's only 720p. This is an eight megapixel rear camera, but it looks really, really good. I took some Instagram photos with it yesterday and they turned out really, really well. So I'm gonna miss the whole 1080p front camera. So I'll probably still use my Note 3 for recording like front facing videos on my second channel, which links out in the description below. Both of these devices have wireless AC. So I get a 433 megabit per second link speed. I posted some proof of that on Instagram. So links to my Instagram will be in the description below. So there are a couple things I'm gonna miss about my Note 3. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm still gonna keep it around, but the SIM card is in my Nexus 5 and my Nexus 5 is activated, not my Note 3. So. I, I lived without a rooted phone for a while. The 4.3 update for the Note 2. That that can, that comes with Nox, the Nox crap. The 4.3 update for the S4. My wife's still on 4.2 because we're not updating the 4.3. We're not. I We both enjoy having root. 
after she gets a T-Mobile um, put service on a, we got our T-Mobile SIM cards, we just got to put service on them. So uh, once she gets service on hers, then which, ugh, the S4 is just going to be like, it's going to be a stack with all these other phones, like my HTC One and my S, the S3. When that gets 4.3, that's probably going to get the Knox crap. And people are talking about like certain things trigger a locked bootloader. And it's it's like Samsung's doing everything they can to keep you from having root access. So I am going to thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this phone. It has the same exact processor. This has three gigs of RAM, but TouchWiz takes up two gigabytes of that three. It says there's 2.38 available and you're usually using about two of those. So you have less than a gigabyte of RAM to use. On here, this is two gigs, AOSP, you don't have jack being used by the OS. You don't have um, an overlay on top of Android taking up two gigs of your freaking RAM. You don't. You're, you're getting all two gigs on here when you're getting less than a gig on here. And you can root your device. You can, you know, use Wi-Fi tether for users, Titania backup, Helium, Wi-Fi key recovery, um, uh, Chainfire's mobile Odin program, which is amazing. It's like running Odin on your computer, but you're doing it from your phone. You don't even have to have custom recovery on your device because mobile Odin will do all that for you. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying my Nexus 5. And as someone that loves rooting, as someone that loves installing ROMs, as someone that loves having the latest version of Android, if you have Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile, or any carrier this thing supports, freaking get this thing. It's a powerhouse. All, the only thing I'm missing is that removable battery, the screen size, and the SD card. But honestly, this is a 32 gig model. I can live with 32 gigs of storage. I have wireless AC. My internet at home is 120 down and 25 up. I can post links to Instagram screenshots in the description below if you don't believe me. I have crazy fast internet. If I want to take something from my phone and put it on Dropbox, it takes just a few seconds, even if it's several megabytes. And I'm willing to sacrifice everything I'm losing with the Note 3 in order to have a device that's mine, that I can unlock that I can root, that I can install ROMs on, that I can modify to my heart's content without worrying about an update. Oh, my phone is an update. Should I install it? Should I not install it? Is it going to mess my root up? Am I going to get the stupid permanent notification saying that my device has been tampered with and I need to reboot my phone? An app has asked for unauthorized access? My Note 3 isn't even rooted and I got a notification yesterday saying that an app is trying to gain unauthorized access. My, and my Note 3 is not even rooted. This is, get a Nexus 5, enjoy having root access, don't worry about losing root access, and have a nice day. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out. Sorry for the rant. Links to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, my second channel, my gaming channel where I post Call of Duty Ghost videos and other videos related to gaming, my Google Plus and my Facebook. Pretty much everything is in the description below. Please click where it says show more, and you'll get to see all the links instead of just the first three. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out.